This is me. I spent four years studying economics in college, pulling all-nighters and cramming for exams. And now I can honestly say that I forgot most of what I learned. But I will always remember the worst six money traps based on behavioral economics that you make every single day that you've never heard of before, especially the third one. So let me reveal what I learned in four years in this video. So you don't have to take out hundreds of thousands of dollars in student loans just to learn them. One thing that always stood out to me about economics is this existence of this mythical creature, the perfectly rational, all-knowing, narrowly self-interested human being called Homo economicus. It's this idea that this being can always make the most effective decisions possible to maximize his profits. Most classical economic models are based on this creature, but is this really the best approach? You and I both know that this person, this being, doesn't actually exist in the real world. You are human, after all. You're not always rational, you experience emotions and feelings, you don't always have the information readily available to you. And even if you do, you might not always make the best choices because, again, you're human. And I think with money and finance, too many people forget this fact that you're not perfect and that you, me, and everyone else are guilty of these six money traps every single day. But that doesn't give you the excuse to not strive to improve yourself when you can. Listen, financial education and economics, they're both boring, especially with the overly complicated theories and formulas that could make anyone fall asleep in a matter of minutes. Finance is hard, and the mission of this channel is to make it easy. So let's get started. Do me a favor and think of your mental bandwidth or cognitive ability as three empty squares. Each square represents something that you can really focus on at any given time. When something big happens, like you're worried that a bill is coming due, a square gets filled up, limiting your ability to focus on other things. As each square gets filled, you become more prone to the scarcity mindset, which reduces your overall cognitive ability to solve problems or retain information, which makes you more impulsive and more prone to making poor financial decisions. A research study conducted by Princeton psychologist Eldar Shafir found something very interesting. He gathered a group of students and asked them to complete several IQ tests while thinking about different financial scenarios. Scenario A was imagine you're driving a car and then it needed a simple car fix that would cost around $150. Scenario B was a much more financially demanding task, a car fix that would cost $1,500, which would be 10 times more. Then he sorted the participants by household income and found a very fascinating pattern. Those who were in the middle class and above did well in both the scenarios, their IQ scores. On the other hand, those who were considered poor performed very differently. This poor group did well with scenario A, the relatively small $150 fix. But in scenario B, their IQ scores dropped significantly. The researchers found that people who have some sort of emotional or financial constraints tend to score lower on the IQ test due to cognitive limitations or the three squares being filled. The scarcity mindset can lead to anxiety and can lead you to make decisions that can further negatively impact your finances. For example, people with a scarcity mindset tend to take on payday loans much more often than others. And payday loans, by the way, are these super high interest loans that might seem like a good solution in the short term, but will cause you to owe a ton of money in the future because of the high interest rate. But don't worry, you can actually change this mindset by doing this one simple thing. By simply turning that like button into a beautiful purple. Oh, sorry, is this, is this the wrong script? My bad, my bad. It's actually giving yourself a break. Now you can't actually increase the number of squares that you have but you can cut out things that are taking up mental space. Small things like setting up automatic payments and reminders are a really good start. Creating a standard routines or just stopping pointless activities. Start building up your emergency fund and free up your mental load, just a bit, so you don't need to constantly obsess over every last penny. But of course, it's easier said than done when you don't have much money to start with. Not all of us have a bunch of extra cash or time just laying around. Those who are in poverty may find this challenging, but that's where fixing the next money mistake can help tremendously. Everything you do in life, whether that's eating a cheeseburger or watching a movie, has a cost. 
And no, I'm not talking about the actual cost of that activity, but instead, a cost that you can't see. I bet that you didn't know that everything has a hidden price called the opportunity cost. Sounds scary, right? Well, it is, because not knowing these hidden costs is one of the biggest financial mistakes that people make without even knowing it. Here, let me explain. Let's say that you have 6,000 bucks in your pocket and you think, I've been good this year. I'm subscribed to Vincent. I turned that like button into a beautiful yellow. I deserve to treat myself. And so you decide to buy the most expensive cheeseburger in the entire world for $6,000, which by the way, is totally ridiculous. You can get a really nice quarter pounder of cheese from McDonald's, which is probably just as delicious. This is a tasty burger. But back to the point. The $6,000 is the cost of the cheeseburger, but the opportunity cost is what you could have done with those $6,000 instead. You could have gone on vacation, invested in your business, or even bought a really nice red brick. Or whatever, I'm not here to judge. But what you do need to know is now that $6,000 is now gone. It's no longer in your possession, and all the other opportunities that that money could have been spent on no longer exist. Now, here's what will blow your mind. Think of it like this, that cheeseburger actually cost you $60,000 over 30 years at the average rate of return of 8% if you invested the money instead. So was that cheeseburger worth a Tesla Model 3? Probably not. And the best way to really take advantage of opportunity costs is with our sponsor, Moomoo. For a limited time, you can get a chance to win two free stocks valued up to $3,500 each from just opening an account and depositing any amount with my link down below. So in total, you can earn free stocks worth up to $7,000 by depositing anything. Plus, if you deposit $100 from December 6th to January 25th, you'll enter a chance to win an iPhone 13 Pro or Oculus Quest 2 from December 16th to January 1st. So what is this thing called Moomoo? Well, it's a stock trading platform with commission-free trading in the United States. It's got really cool professional grade tools without being too scary or intimidating. Whether you're a new or experienced investor, Moomoo offers customizable features for you. From the ability to simply invest to easily look at a company's financial data, analyst ratings, all the way to advanced charts and detailed stock analytical tools. Make sure you pause the video and get a chance to win two free stocks valued up to $7,000 with the link down below. It's basically free money, so you might as well give it a try. If I received $1 for each hour that you commit this money trap in a 24 hour day, at the end of the day, I would have $26. So pay attention because it can actually get really confusing. If you buy something and that cost has already happened, meaning that the transaction went through and the money is no longer recoverable, then that cost shouldn't influence any future decision. What the heck? Okay, here's an easy example. Let's say you just spent $10 to watch Sharknado just because. After 20 minutes into the movie, you start to question your entire existence and ask why anyone would spend $2 million to make this steaming pile of sh with flying sharks. But instead of leaving the movie theater, you think that you've already spent the $10, you might as well finish the rest of the movie. Otherwise, you'd be wasting your money. No! This is where the sunk cost fallacy grips its little irrational paws around our minds and makes sure that we get our money's worth, even though it shouldn't matter anymore because the cost is not recoverable and you'd just be wasting more time and the opportunity cost of that time. But it doesn't just apply to these little things like a movie ticket. The sunk cost fallacy also applies to other areas such as your job. You're sitting at your desk, you're drinking all the free mediocre coffee you want. But then one day at work, you feel empty. You feel like something inside is missing. You're thinking that perhaps you made the wrong decision and that this job makes you miserable. Do you just say, screw it and start from scratch somewhere else? We need to talk. No, of course not. You probably stay. In your mind, you already invested years and years of your life into this current job. And you think that you'd waste all those years if you switched to something else. But the sunk cost fallacy is this invisible anchor that's tied around your leg, pulling you in deeper and deeper, unless you actively untie it. Again, it also goes with opportunity cost because there's always that what if. What if you didn't stay an extra hour to finish watching the miserable Sharknado movie? What else could you have done with your time? Not understanding sunk cost can warp your perception of value, but that's not the worst of it. The next mistake can actually leave you financially ruined forever.
Damn, that's a lot of text. This one might sound like academic jibber jabber, but it's quite simple. Come on down to Crazy Hub's used car lot. We've got prices slashing down from 2004s to 19. This is called transactional utility. You could think of it as putting a huge red on sale sign next to a toaster. Transactional utility is a psychological trick that companies have been exploiting for centuries to lure you into wasting your precious dollars. In the US, we even have a whole day dedicated to exploiting you. Right after you spend a whole day celebrating everything you're thankful for, <clears throat> Black Friday, where hundreds and thousands of greedy people push, shove, and pummel one another for a discounted toaster. Ah, wonderful. But you might think that that's not you, that you're better than that. But you're wrong. Research shows that what you buy isn't just dependent on the value of the good relative to its price, but it's heavily impacted by your perception of a good deal. If you believe that you're saving some money when purchasing something, you're much more likely to go and buy it. This is great when you get a deal for something that you already intended to buy, but it gets really financially dangerous when the discount itself convinces you to buy things that you never originally wanted. Let's say you walk into your favorite supermarket. You just want to get some ingredients to make a delicious smashed cheeseburger. No lettuce, no tomato, obviously. But on your way to the cheese aisle, you see a huge red sign advertising a brand new Mr. Magic Lamp, just like this one over here, that is 30% off. Wouldn't you be tempted at least to check it out? Heck, you might even buy it and forget why you even went to the store in the first place. You go home feeling fantastic, awesome, Think that you just got the deal of a lifetime and saved yourself a good chunk of money. But in reality, you didn't need it. At all. Just kidding, of course you need a magic lamp. If you're a real one, comment Mr. Magic Mustache Lamp in the comments down below. If you're one of the many people budgeting your money this specific way, then you've been bamboozled. This way is called mental accounting. And it's when people keep separate mental buckets of their money and then track their spending based on which bucket it's coming from, instead of treating all their money as one big pool. It is a bit confusing, so make sure you pay attention to this famous research study where the researchers couldn't even believe the results they got. Participants were given one of two scenarios. In scenario A, they either had to pay $10 for a $10 ticket that they lost, or in scenario B, they had to buy a $10 ticket after losing $10. The study found that in scenario B, the ones who lost the $10 were 88% likely to buy the $10 ticket, while in scenario A, only 46% bought another ticket. And the researchers were shocked by the results because it doesn't make much sense to see such a huge gap in numbers. After all, it was the same amount of money that they lost and they would have to spend. But soon they realized that this is the fallacy of mental accounting that you subconsciously categorize money into different buckets with different values. And naturally, you'll overvalue or undervalue certain ones. In this case, some of the participants had a mental spending bucket specifically for entertainment purposes. And after losing the ticket, they didn't wanna spend more money from the entertainment bucket. On the other hand, the $10 bill that the people lost doesn't belong to a specific category because it was a general $10 bill. And therefore, it wasn't impacted by any value factor, so they were more willing to spend it again. When mental accounting is applied, irrational decisions are often made. Unfortunately, these decisions can compound themselves, leading to really bad, wasteful spending over the years. Oh, I have three kids and no money. Why can't I have no kids and three money? And if you're thinking that this doesn't apply to you, I bet you tree fitty that you still mentally account your money for things such as work bonuses or tax refunds. People tend to categorize these things as free money and then recklessly spend it on things like a $6,000 cheeseburger or a Mr. Magic Lamp because they mentally assign a different value to it from their regular paychecks. That's why companies roll out a ton of tax refund sales and discounts from the end of January until early May. At the end of the day, the value of money is the same. Although mental accounting is better than nothing, it's a mistake that will get worse if you let it go unchecked. If you wanna know what I discovered to be my most effective strategy in budgeting my money, follow me on Instagram and send me a DM sloths and I'll send you my strategy. Link to my Instagram is in the description down below.
This all starts with marshmallows. What does? The biggest money mistake that you're making right now and a big predictor of your future wealth. In 1972, the first marshmallow experiment was conducted and became a staple in every college psychology course. Researchers gathered a group of kids, gave each of them a marshmallow, and then gave them one of two options. They can either eat the marshmallow now, or if they wait a bit, then they get more marshmallows. And then the researchers left the room and watched history unfold. This test has revealed that the children who were able to delay their gratification or wait for more marshmallows were far more likely to be successful in their adult lives. And the simple reason is this. They had the discipline to overcome their impulses for immediate pleasure and instead wait for a big reward in the future, which is one of the keys to financial success. For example, think about how you're getting to work every day, maybe by Uber or by bus. Now, taking an Uber sounds nice, right? You get the immediate comfort of your own ride at whatever time you want, and you can avoid sitting next to really gross people. But this comes at a premium. The alternative option is you delay your gratification, and instead of an Uber, you take a bus. And then you save some money, and then you invest the difference and grow it until you can buy your very own car later down the line. That's delayed gratification, and successfully reaping the long-term benefits instead of just focusing on the short-term rewards. Now, don't think for a second that just because I'm sharing these money mistakes with you that I don't fall for them anymore. I'm not a perfectly rational human being, and I make these mistakes too. But I'm trying to improve every single day, which hopefully after you learn these mistakes, you can do the same. But these money traps won't matter anymore if the US dollar dies, maybe. Yes, I, I know this is really out of left field, but check out this video to learn how the US dollar's empire can fall, similar to all great empires before it, the British, the Roman, and everything else. And specifically, what you can do now to prepare, and trust me, this will blow your mind.